from GAO, United States General Accounting Office, Office of the Comptroller General, Human Capital, a Self-Assessment Checklist for Agency Leaders. What is human capital? Simply stated, human capital means people. There are, however, two key principles that are central to the human capital idea. First, people are assets whose value can be enhanced through investment. As with any investment, the goal is to maximize value while maintaining ri managing risk. As the value of people increases, so does the performance capacity of the organization and therefore its value to clients and other stakeholders. From ACC.com, Association of Corporate Counsel. The Association of Corporate Counsel, or ACC, is a global bar association that promotes the common professional and business interests of in-house counsel who work for corporations, associations, and other private sector organizations through information, education, networking opportunities, and advocacy initiatives. From co.dodge.wi.us, Dodge County, Wisconsin Corporate Council. Purpose of the Corporation Council. The Dodge County Corporation Council is the attorney who provides legal advice to the county board, its committees, and county departments, drafts and reviews ordinances and resolutions for county board action, advises the county board with respect to parliamentary procedures, attends county committee meetings and other county-related meetings, and reviews contracts in which the county is a party. The Dodge County Corporation Council prosecutes mental commitment cases, guardianship, protective placement services cases, children in need of protection or services or CHIPS cases, juveniles in need of protection or services or GIPS cases, termination of parental rights or TPR cases, shoreland, wetland, floodplain and sanitary code violations, and citations issued by the Dodge County Sheriff's Department which allege violation of a county ordinance, except for those citations which allege a violation of a county ordinance which was, has adopted Section 346.631A or Section 346.631B of the Wisconsin Statutes. The Dodge County Corporation Council Office is a central location site for the Dodge County Collection Program involving delinquent guardian ad litem fees, custody study fees, mediation fees, court-appointed legal counsel fees, attorney service fees, and monies due to all county departments that require legal proceedings to collect on outstanding accounts due to Dodge County. The Dodge County Corporation Council serves as the attorney for the East Wisconsin County's Railroad Consortium and performs the duties of recording secretary for the consortium pursuant to Section 59.58 and Section 63.0301 of the Wisconsin Statutes. The Dodge County Corporation Council Office represents only Dodge County government and may not render a legal opinion or provide advice to individuals. So let's go back to Association of Corporate Council again. The Association of Corporate Council, or ACC, is a global bar association that promotes the common professional and business interests of in-house counsel who work for corporations, associations, and other private sector organizations through information, education, networking opportunities, and advocacy initiatives. What is human capital? Simply stated, human capital means people. From building criminal capital behind bars, social learning in juvenile corrections by Patrick Baer, Randy Pintoff, and David E. Posen. This paper analyzes the influence that juvenile offenders serving time in the same correctional facility have on each other's subsequent criminal behavior, or capital returns. The analysis is based on data of over 8,000 individuals serving time in 169 juvenile corrections facility during a two-year period in Florida. Quote, Danbury was in a prison. It was a crime school. I went in with a Bachelor of Marijuana and came out with a Doctorate of Cocaine. From George Jung, Johnny Depp, describing his introduction to the cocaine industry in the motion picture Blow. Introduction Juvenile crime is a serious problem in modern American society. In 2000, 
law enforcement agencies throughout the United States made approximately 2.4 million arrests of juveniles under the age of 18, or approximately one arrest for every 10 individuals between the ages of 13 and 18. More than 500,000 of these arrests were for property crimes, more than 200,000 were for drug-related violations, and almost 100,000 were for violent crimes. On any given day in 1999, over 100,000 juvenile offenders were being held in residential placement. Part 5. Policy Considerations Given the strong and robust evidence of reinforcing peer effects in correctional facilities, two policy-related issues merit further examination. The optimal assignment of individuals to facilities and how peer quality is distributed across individuals and facilities. With regards to optimal assignment, our results point to two broad conclusions. First, because the social interactions estimated in juvenile correction facilities flow more readily from older to younger individuals, assignment policies that aim to reduce the exposure of young individuals to their older peers may substantially diminish the transfers of crime-related human capital from one cohort to the next. They're not practicing this, are they? Which brings us back to the GEA, GAO Human Capital, a self-assessment checklist for agency leaders. Strategic planning. Establish the agency's mission, vision for the future, core values, goals, and objectives and strategies. High performance organizations begin by defining what they want to accomplish and what kind of organization they want to be. They define a shared vision, i.e. a mission, a vision for the future, core values, core goals and objectives and strategies, and communicate that shared vision clearly, constantly, and consistently. From NIJ.gov, the National Institute of Justice, Practical Implications of Current Domestic Violence Research for Law Enforcement Prosecutors and Judges. Chapter 3, Offender Characteristics. What is their gender? Although some sociological research based on self-reporting find, finds equal rates of male and female partner conflict, including mostly minor physical assaults, behavior that is likely to violate most state and federal criminal and civil protective order statutes, is typically perpetrated by males. Okay, that, that statement alone is contradictory. And the reason for this is these are their directives. Implications for law enforcement. If the ratio of male to female suspects and victims differs substantially from those found above, departments should be alert to potential gender bias. They're saying if you're arresting too many females because you've evidence that they're abusing males, you're probably biased and you need to redesign um, your process or redesign the mindset that you have in order to criminalize males because males hold a higher human capital value than females and the average citizen will not accept the truth about females being the main perpetrator of abuse. So by law we're going to play this game and increase the human capital and capital returns to the corporation. As an example from UNODC.org or the United Nations Office of on Drugs and Crime UNODC report on human trafficking exposes modern form of slavery. February 12, 2009, a global report on trafficking in persons. According to the report, the most common form of human trafficking, 79%, is sexual exploitation. The victims of sexual exploitation are predominantly women and girls. Surprisingly, in 30% of the countries which provided information on the gender of traffickers, women make up the largest proportion of traffickers. In some parts of the world, women trafficking is the norm. Now, they only polled 30% of the countries and asked the gender of the perpetrator. That's what that says. And in 69% of the reports, females were the main perpetrator of child and female sex trafficking. From cbc.ca, Native Canadian women sold on U.S. ships, researchers says. Report says First Nations women from Thunder Bay, Ontario, 
trafficked in sex trade in Minnesota. An American researcher says First Nations women from Thunder Bay, Ontario, have been sold on ships in the harbor of Duluth, Minnesota. Christine Sark said the port of Duluth is notorious among First Nations people as a site for trafficking women. The master's student at the University of Minnesota Duluth said she has anecdotal reports of women, teenage girls, and boys as well as babies being sold on ships for sex. From the characteristics of children missing from care, several studies, B. Hall and Wade 2002, Courtney and Wong 1996, Fazulo et al. 2002, and Florida Department of Law Enforcement 2002, Netsmith 2002, have examined the demographic characteristics of children missing from care. Netsmith 2002 compiled data on the individual, family, and child welfare characteristics that predict running away after initial placement foster care intake and the timing of running once in care. Nesmith used a sample of foster youth from Wisconsin and Minnesota ages 11 to 18 with at least three months in foster care. Significant findings include considerable evidence shows that running away is a common problem among adolescents in foster care. Runaways from foster care are at risk of a host of short and long-term negative outcomes regarding their physical and emotional well-being and adjustment. Running away increases more sharply over time for males than for females. Native Americans are twice as likely to run away as whites. Among males, Native Americans are five times more likely to run away than whites. For girls, emancipation decreased the likelihood of running. For boys in long-term foster care, the risk of running was twice that of reunification. Youth with higher child behavior checklist scores on externalizing behaviors were more likely to run. The addition of just one risk factor on a list of factors the study identified increased the likelihood of running by 8%. Now I hope everybody's realizing here that this is a ringer. This is how they explain away child sex trafficking and female sex trafficking maintained by the corporate entity. Going back to the report on cbc.ca. The women and children, and I've had women talk about a couple babies brought onto the ships and sold to the men on ships, are being sold or are exchanging sex for alcohol, a place to stay, drugs, money and so forth, Stark said. It's quite shocking. Stark said the sex trade on ships has been going on for generations and includes indigenous women from Canada. Now what they're doing is they can take off-color children through the Department of Health and Human Services, through the Child Protection Services systems, and nobody's looking because they're off-color. You have been taught to dehumanize each other. You've been taught to denature each other to believe in racism, to believe in gender identities, cultural identities, and religious indoctrination in order to be pit and polarized against each other so that the corporation can traffic your children and females, males. Slave labor is just absolutely abhorrent. However, that's what the corporation is doing, is male slave, slave labor, female and children's child sex trafficking. It's all run through the corporations maintained by, of course, corporate counsel, appearing to be charitable. They are taking advantage of your charitable nature and your ignorance of the law and what they are actually doing. So what do we do now? You're witnessing human trafficking maintained and perpetrated by the corporation counsel for the benefit of corporations. What happens next? Well, first, the media run by the Broadcasting Board of Governors, of course, which has international control of the civilian media, presents to you that it's you. It's not a corporation, right? And so you scream and you go petition Congress and you go petition Senate and the House of Representatives for help and you lobby for help, when in reality it's them. It's the corporation doing this. Now the back end is what's most disgusting because now that they've presented to you that there's human trafficking going on, they need to diagnose the victims of such. From the International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems, 10th Revision, ICD-10 version for 2010, Chapter 21, Factors Influencing Health Status and Contact with Health Services, Z00 through Z13. 
persons encountering health services for examination and investigation. Z20 through Z29. Persons with potential health hazards related to communicable diseases. Of course, they're going to get STDs when they're being trafficked by each other. Z30 to Z39. Persons encountering health services in circumstances related to reproduction. Okay, we're going to come up with a whole bunch of pregnant teens, right? Pregnant females, people who are being sex trafficked through the system. Z40 through Z54, persons encountering health services for specific pre procedures and health care. They've been traumatized. Z55 through Z65, persons with potential health hazards related to socioeconomic and psychosocial so circumstances. So when they report that this is indigenous people who are suffering from this, low-income individuals suffering from this, that's so they can diagnose them and cash in on the back end. Z70 through Z76, persons encountering health services in other circumstances, and Z80 through Z99, persons with potential health hazards related to family and personal history and certain conditions influencing health status. Victims of domestic violence, for example. So the court will diagnose you as injured. Injured means to be brought into law. They brought you into law. They injured you. They injured your children. They injured the females. They injured the males. And it's a constant generation of revenue maintained, of course, through the National Security Act and national policy maintaining corporate welfare. You are the product maintaining corporate welfare, meaning that all of these monies generated through diagnosis, front end is the kidnapping aspect, human trafficking aspect, back end is the diagnosis. This is used to maintain corporate welfare. Who's directing this? The Association of Corporate Counsel. The Association of Corporate Counsel is a global bar association that promotes the common professional and business interests of in-house counsel who work for corporations, associations, and other private sector organizations through information, education, networking opportunities, and advocacy initiatives. It looks charitable. From NewsOK.com, missing 78 children from Oklahoma Department of Human Services custody. 78 children in custody of the Oklahoma Department of Human Services are missing. 38 of them have been missing for more than three months. There are no Amber Alerts being issued. There are no missing kids reports other than this. Somebody delved into this. What is the purpose of this? Corporate welfare. They've already indoctrinated you to believe these kids go missing because they ran away. They are not running away. They're being entered into their child sex trafficking schematic maintained by corporate counsel and otherwise known as the Board of Commissioners. Now you've got two commission states at play, but they all maintain corporate welfare for the corporations by doing what they're doing. This is all policy, corporate policy. Stop patronizing this thing. Stop calling it your father and move. Get up. Stand. These are our babies. These are our females. These are our males. Enough is enough. The Bone Rocco Show, everything legal plus more. You never know what you're going to hear on The Bone Rocco Show at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Is there some kind of magic status that will keep you safe from quasi-government intervention? Are there really multiple types of citizens? Doesn't matter if you're a citizen of the national state or the federal state. Is there such thing as a sovereign state? Should you claim constitutional rights? Here at the Bowen Rocco Show, we still maintain divesting off title, do no harm, indict those that do harm as a sovereign state under 28 U.S.C. Chapter 97. Tune into freedomslips.com, Revolution Radio. Ever feel as though human beings are being farmed? You know, your food is chosen by the FDA, you're told what drugs you can take, what drugs you can't take, what drugs you must take. Your productive value is harvested from you daily. Sales tax, income tax, property tax, utility bills, mortgages, interest payments. When you exercise a bit of freedom on feed or food, traveling or other matters, the 
farmer cracks down on you. Ever thought of leaving the farm? Learn how. Join Pat and Tammy for Leaving the Farm, Saturdays, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, Studio A. See you there, or at the feed trough.